19 weird but useful ways to travel in Minecraft. Transport is by definition a means to an end, but that doesn't mean we have to be boring about it. And that's why today we're looking at the strange ways to travel that might just be worth a try. And hey, the YouTube coach bets me that you can't subscribe to the channel before this bowling ball hits all the pins. So to prove him wrong, strike that red sub button below. It's free and it ups out a ton. Number one, elytras are a great form of Minecraft travel, but that's not news to anybody. Though without the proper fireworks, this great invention becomes a failure to launch. But it turns out that all we need is some claustrophobia and we can shoot off right to the skies. See, Minecraft has something called entity cramming, which happens when enough mobs are packed into a single space. And while there is a limit to this, if we use just one mob less than that in a one by one space, we can get some serious propulsion. Apparently, all the little nudges from the various mobs adds up to be a punch of speed for our elytra takeoff, giving us the tight squeeze needed to reach the horizon. Number two, at some point, I think we've all wanted to be an astronaut, but without a billion dollars in the bank, that's a pipe dream for most of us. So that leaves us two options. We got either sit around and mope or start to work in Minecraft science. As it is, we don't have much in the way of rocket fuel, but what we do have is TNT and a lot of it, which means if we grab a whole bunch of TNT minecarts, we can pack enough of these suckers into a small space to launch us right towards the moon. Though so maybe pack some blast protection and totems on dying to do this. Otherwise, both of you and your dreams would go up in smoke. Number three, when you're exploring in Minecraft, you're bound to come across an ocean at some point. And while a boat is a standard choice, let's be honest, it's a bit dull and it's definitely not the fastest, but rather to pull off some real speeds across the ocean blue, it pays to grab a dolphin driver of our own. With this, we can not only benefit from the effects of dolphin's grace, but we can also add in our own depth strider three to the mix. And at that point, grab hold of your lead and get ready for some serious speed. I mean, this helps us become something of a torpedo in the ocean blue. And might I add, it also looks plenty cool as well. Number four, ice boat highways are a popular form of travel, especially when paired with a nether hub of sorts. But while these do make for great speed, they're not always a joy to build. So if you and your friends are tired of riding an unfinished highway, you can always try this. With the right amount of slime blocks and basalt, we can make a fully functional ice tunnel building machine. Now, obviously the redstone trickery on display here is enough to make your head spin. And frankly, I wouldn't even know to start building one of these. But playing in a proof of concept world like this can definitely show off how cool the dream could be. And I think that's worth experiencing. Number five, nether portals are a dream for travel. Surely being able to teleport anywhere in the world makes transportation a breeze. But going into the nether isn't always a fun trip. So what if we can make portals strictly in the overworld? Well, thanks to enderpearl stasis systems, that is, in some way, possible. After throwing an ender pearl into place at the different locations, all we need is chunk loaders and redstone to connect your overworld portal network. Really, if you've got the time to lay out the redstone, the possibilities with this can be pretty impressive. And once that's figured out, it definitely makes for a snazzy way to get around your base. Number six, getting an elytra is a great thing, but getting to the end cities, not so much. And unfortunately for us, it's always tougher to get an elytra when you don't already have an elytra. So to save yourself the headache of building across the end void gaps, why don't we get a bit more technical instead. See, with the help of a flying machine, we can build a vessel perfect for the journey to the outer islands. Now, granted, stopping or turning the ship might be a bit of a problem, but with the proper planning, this could save you from placing thousands of blocks while searching. And if you ask me, I'd much rather take this passive option compared to that. Number seven, I don't know a lot of things, but I'm pretty sure that boats belong in the water. Though, it turns out that these can do some quick work within the skies. If you got a fishing rod, all it takes is a boat in the right position, and we can launch that sucker sky high. And folks, I'll admit, it might take some precision to get the arc just right. But once you pull that off, you can take those planks for quite the ride. And as this user showed off on Reddit, you can even bring a passenger along for the journey. So if you're tired of breaking your boat to bring it upstairs, I might recommend trying this at least once. Number eight, minecarts are a quintessential bit of Minecraft transportation. But while we've all tried to build a roller coaster in the past, I doubt they've looked anything like this. Though that might have been our mistake, since as you can see, these new methods can get some crazy speed. For some reason, a curved track like so allows the cart to rocket along the path. And while the non-powered version trails off at a certain point, this Goldilocks option offers both speed and longevity. So if you're trying to build the next travel system for your underground subway, maybe give this thing a go going forward. Number nine, it's an old fact of gaming. Wall jumping is fun, but what we can do over here, we can't quite pull off in Minecraft. At least we can't without mods. But with the 1.17 update, we might just have our best candidate. With the recent addition of powdered snow buckets, we now have a way to place blocks and then pick them up all with the same button. Meaning with the right timing, we can use this to create a seamless stepping stool right to where we need to go. And sure, it's not as robust as something like a water bucket, but if you're looking to scale walls in the nether, this pick is definitely worth a shot. Number 10, shields are a very useful tool, but once you're holding one of these, speed is the last thing on your mind. Though the bedrock edition might have an interesting solution for that. Here, when your friend holds a shield, we can punch them multiple times and still get the knockback, which has led some of the community to discover a technique like this. Here, we can alternate shield usage between the two players and essentially create a ladder of sorts. No joke, you could even use this to jump six blocks high in some cases. And not to mention, 
mentioned that using this properly could also help you to clear horizontal distances as well, making these shields a lot better for traversal than any of us thought. Number 11. Minecraft staircases should be straightforward, but as we've shown in the past, there are plenty of weird staircases that we can put to use in our worlds, and this is no different. What might look like a random mix of blocks and foodstuffs is actually the fastest walkable staircase in the game. The truth is that the way that these hitboxes are laid out, it's just so that we can stand in the middle and climb these staircases seamlessly. And sure, a proper spiral staircase would look much nicer, but if you want the speed to climb up to your mountain, this is hard to beat. Number 12. Horses aren't that popular for travel, which is fair because they're quickly outclassed late game, but they might still have one thing going for them. See, in the Bedrock version, we're able to place blocks under us in a speed bridge like so, but what's better still is that this even works on horseback, meaning with the right speed, we can even speed bridge on a horse, which is wild to see, and even if it isn't as practical as an elytra boost, I've gotta admit that this is a lot of fun to mess around with. So if you're looking to bring your items across a gorge, maybe just grab a pack mule and do the trek like so. Number 13. Pigs and saddles are somewhat of a laughing stock when it comes to transportation, but what they lack on the ground, they more than make up for in the skies. It turns out that with the right technique, we can tie a lead between an elytra and a saddle pig and essentially create a two-person rideshare. Is it practical? I've got no clue, but clearly it's a sight to see. So if you've got both the leads and pigs to spare, it's well worth your time to try this out on the server. And if you start from the right height, you might just clear some serious distance with your friend in tow, which I think is just fantastic. Number 14. Oceans are a common obstacle in Minecraft travel, but luckily boats offer up an easy solution for that. However, these simple ships could really use an upgrade. So if you're looking to become a proper captain on the seven seas, maybe use your boat's second seat for a boost. Like maybe bringing along a witch to offer up some extra artillery support. Because luckily for us, their potions throw in such an arc that you'll never get hit. Or maybe you're trying to move house, in which case a llama brings along some extra storage slots for your belongings. And really, whichever you choose, I'm sure it'll be better than just having some lonely trip across the deep blue. Number 15. Any Minecraft veterans will know that in PvP, the retreat can be just as important as the attack. So to help out in that defensive strategy, you might just have the solution. See, in Bedrock, if you start sprinting and then backpedal right before your screen finishes zooming out the FOV, we can start to move backwards at the same speed that we move forwards. And at that point, we've got the perfect skillful tactic to keep us active while leaving the fight. And you can even swing your sword while doing this, letting us continue to knock back oncoming enemies. So next time you're getting chased, this might just give you the upper hand, or at least a solid escape plan. Number 16. Water elevators have become a staple in Minecraft builds. After all, it's quite handy to have a seamless elevator to go from point A to point B. But they don't always fit in with the aesthetic. So to solve that issue, what if we didn't have to see the elevator while using it? As strange as that sounds, it's actually possible. By using honey blocks like so, their hitbox is just small enough to let us ride the water elevator, but not actually enter the bubble stream. So if we put something like item frames and map art on the outside, we get an invisible elevator, all without sacrificing our build's look. Number 17. Minecarts and water don't mix. Or at least, that was the case prior to the 1.17 update. But since then, the Caves and Cliffs update has allowed us to do a lot more in Java to mix these minecarts and rivers like so. Which is cool to have parity with Bedrock, but that version still has one major plus. See, the minecarts over here don't lose momentum while entering bubble streams. Meaning, if we line a nearby lake with soul sand like such, we can bounce our cart right across to the other side. It's definitely a ridiculous way to travel, but who knows, it might be worth adding into your next Splash Mountain remake. Number 18. Minecraft servers are bound to have their share of lag, which can sometimes be annoying, but also allow for great things like this. See, with the way the connection lag works, we can use the rubber banding in some way to slingshot ourselves forward. So if you have the wings needed, you can ride that connection current to get some impressive momentum. All that needs to happen is that we hit the ground, double tap space, and then keep a sine wave motion of sorts to keep going. And like that, we have the capabilities to bounce across the Minecraft scenery. So if you played enough Super Mario World, that cape feather practice is finally gonna pay off. Number 19. The Frostwalker enchantment is a hard one to justify. After all, adding this to your boots means you're locking yourself out of some more valuable choices like Depth Strider. But say you've already got a pair of shoes with the enchantment, then why don't we make the most of it? Now the two key ingredients that we need to add here are Riptide Trident and a Rainstorm overhead. Then, once we've got those, we've got the right conditions to slip and slide our way across the ocean. Simply spam the Riptide Trident and we'll launch ourselves right across the ice highways. And hey, this might even allow your friend to follow behind in a boat, meaning that both parties can enjoy the ride. And with that folks, travel to that red sub button below and have a good one, alright?